Edinburgh. Also joining us now is Reform UK's parliamentary candidate in the Kingswood by-election, Rupert Lowe. Rupert, uh, have you had the opportunity to get some sleep after being up all night seeing those votes counted? Not a huge amount, Jake. I, I got about four hours sleep, uh, actually, so... Uh, but I feel as frisky as a cricket, so I'm fine. Do you feel pleased to have uh, got 2,578 votes and uh, sort of maybe by design or by accident seen a Labour MP elected for Kingswood? Well, I, I, I don't think, as I said last night, it's just votes we've taken from the Tories. We've taken votes from Labour as well, because ultimately, whether you're red or whether you're blue, they're just shuffling the chairs on the Titanic. And um, if we don't start to take note of the, the iceberg we're about to hit, then we're all going to go down some very icy depths. And um, my, my concern, and I think a lot of the, the very helpful people, and I must say thank you to all the people who helped me in, in Kingswood, it was a lightning campaign. I think we suffered in the postal vote, but we, our campaign gathered momentum. And by the end, I think we, if we'd had another another month of campaigning, we would have got a substantially bigger vote than 10.4%, than which in itself was a, a hell of an achievement. But tempo so I, I think this, this, is, this is the real people uh, sending a message to Westminster that they're not happy with the way they're being governed. They're not happy with all the government waste. They're not happy with all the government inefficiency. They're not happy with the taxes they're paying. They're not happy with the National Health Service. They're not happy with almost everything. And I think what I'm seeing is those 22 million people who are now funding huge numbers of people who are now on benefits are beginning, quite rightly, to say, well, I pay lots of tax and it's time that I got some value for that, rather than being criticised for working hard and having some money because they have their enterprise and entrepreneurial and being criticised, I think they're beginning to start to stand up for themselves. And I, I urge Rupert. more and more of Middle England to show that they're not happy. And I, I, that's, I was delighted to stand last uh, and Rupert, last you, should be, you should be As very proud. As a lightning proud. rod for discontent. You, you should be very proud of the result you achieved. And in fact, the 10% you achieved is reflective of the broader national polling position of your party and it's, it's the best result I think it's ever enjoyed. So congratulations to you and congratulations well, ben, on your candidacy. Ben, ben, but ben, would, you, would, you, would you accept that if that were to be repeated in a general election in every constituency up and down the land, the Reform Party wouldn't gain one seat. It would in fact make it much more likely uh, that there would be a Labour government. Would you accept that the things that you care about, which I think I care about too, things like lower taxes, supporting people in entrepreneurship, celebrating people who make money by running their own business. Do you, do you think they will be better or worse under a Labour government? Well, the Labour government, as I said, is no, it's worse than the Tory government. And, you know, whereas the Tories with an 80 seat majority, I, I don't know, Jake, you tell me one thing that you as a Tory are proud of. Uh, that's been achieved with an 80-seat majority. I, I can't think of one thing. So we stood down uh, in 2019 in all the Tory seats, as you well know, uh, and there was all sorts of sort of deal-making going on behind the scenes uh, before that election. You had an 80-seat majority. You've done nothing with it. So I, I think Labour will be worse. Uh, and what I say to people is, ultimately, the first-past-the-post system the question for me now is, does the country disappear over a sort of social and financial uh, cliff, uh, or do the people exercise the power that they've got through the ballot box in order to affect change in time to actually save us? Uh, it's far from certain that they will, because I think a lot of the British people are very decent, they're very phlegmatic, uh, but I think they're beginning to see they're not being well governed, and, and I see it, you know, I run lots of businesses, nothing's working you know the government's licensing everything regulating everything and they're failing in everything they do whether it's the probate office whether it's the land registry whether it's nhs whatever they do they make a complete mess of it and well, we've got Rupert. far more civil servants than we've ever had so honestly jake we need radical change and we need it now OK, but I, uh, first of all, you asked me a quick question there. I'll happily answer it. I was part of Boris Johnson's cabinet in 2019. I was involved, in a very small way, in some of the horse trading and the deal that was done with the Brexit party, which then became the 
really has become the Reform Party, there's been a few changes, I think, in the middle, was that we would get on and deliver that oven-ready deal for Brexit, which we did do. And in the intervening period, you say, what have we done with an 80-seat majority? We've fought... You haven't delivered Brexit, Jake. You haven't delivered Brexit. Sorry. I, it's traditional that I ask the question, but you ask me a question, so I will yeah. try and answer it. But um, yeah. and then, of course, what we did was we delivered a global beating vaccine faster than anyone else in Europe. I note that you say we haven't delivered Brexit. I might tell you that half the people who come on this show whinge about Brexit having happened. So that's something that divides the country as probably as equally as the Brexit referendum itself. So I think the Conservative government's got quite a record to be proud of. And I go back to that point that you say you want lower taxes, you want less regulation, you want the public sector to be better. I think we agree. I'm a Conservative. There's nothing I disagree with you in relation to that. I just think all of that shared ambition we have is made much, much harder if you have a reform party that will simply put the Labour Party... In. I think on the, on the results, and it's an extraordinary result, I've congratulated you on it, I'll take the opportunity to do it again, but on that result, there wouldn't be one reform MP in the whole of the country, which rather begs the question, what's the point of voting for the party? Well, there's a big point in voting for the party, Jake, because I, I disagree with you completely. We haven't had Brexit. You haven't rolled back all of the rules we imported from Europe. The essential difference in us and Europe is that they are rule-based and we aren't. So ultimately, unless the law tells them they can do something, they assume they can't. And here, unless the law says we can't do something, we assume we can. So we've imported loads of laws, regulations, rules. I wrote an article recently in The Telegraph. There's just one example of it. Uh, the problem is the com it's a complex subject and it doesn't, it's not served well by sound bites on, 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 on either talk TV or, or any other interview. It, it needs people who get in amongst the, the detail and actually start to act in the interests of Britain. So I, I think, you know, the Tory party has, should be proud of paying Machiavellian politics stabbing each other in the back, failing to do anything with an 80-seat majority. Uh, and I was pleased to stand as a lightning rod for discontent. And I think in, 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 in my sort of uh, uh, financial terms and chart building terms, we are building a huge base now at Reform. We haven't had the breakout yet, uh, but I think it's coming. And I, I can't see any reason why the British public would go on indulging this ridiculous first-past-the-post two-party oligopoly, which is failing the country. There's just absolutely no long-term planning. Uh, and we're not, you're not acting in the interests of the British people. So well, it's going to change and it's it's on the way. So for reform to be moving up as we have done over the last six to nine months, I think any sensible Tory will start to listen to the message they're being given uh, and, and take action. Because if they don't, they're going to suffer some quite severe consequences. Rupert? Thank you for joining us and again, congratulations on being the candidate in the Kingswood by-election.